Starscream's one of those characters. We don't love him, you don't hate him, but you got mutual respect for him. I believe there's no Optimus Prime without Megatron. To be without me, Prime. Time to find out. And the same goes for there's no Megatron without Starscream. Please don't shoot! <laughs> In Transformers history, I do not believe there's been a more perfectly written Transformer than Starscream is in this show. The show itself is called Transformers Armada. The show itself aired from 2002 to 2003. And a lot of people my age say that this is their Transformers. A lot of people say Gen 1. But no one says Beast Wars. Megatron! Terrorize! <laughs> Do you mind? Sorry. But for my generation, we'll say it's Transformers Armada and even had a cool PS2 game. But in this video, I want to specifically speak about the amazing story of Starscream. I don't need your sympathy. Now leave me alone. What's the actual fuck? And you get to experience both sides of the battle and think to yourself, is it due to the Transformers programming or the way they are as an individual? However, I've split this video into three different chapters. Chapter one being realization. Chapter two being betrayal. And chapter three, you'll have to wait and see because trust me, man, it's going to be an emotional one. Let's kick it off with chapter one, realization. Our story starts where the Autobots are being ambushed by the Decepticons by saying there's a minicon nearby. But Starscream being Starscream who he is, decides to go straight in and go in for the kill, but doesn't actually think it through. Starscream is blinded by so much hate that he just wants to destroy the Autobots and have the minicons for himself and show his loyalty to Megatron, but realizes no one actually has his back. No one's there for his help. Why have you all abandoned me? So he's stranded and in fact just gets laughed at by the rest of the Autobots. Gonna believe this, Starscream, but you're the only Decepticon around here. I guess all your buddies packed up and decided to go home. <laughs> In embarrassment, Starscream goes straight to the Decepticon base and confronts Megatron for leaving him behind, with Megatron showing a lot of sympathy for him. You're still alive. I suppose congratulations are in order. For us to size, let out a little giggle. Starscream goes straight for his neck. And from the other Decepticon reactions, they both seem very upset over this. Won't listen to your lies anymore, Thrust. <laughs> oh no, Thrust is getting trashed on. He deserves it too. Starscream disappears and gets so frustrated that he even says this. Even if I have to join the Autobots. You wouldn't dare. Megatron is now furiated by this comment and straight up blasts him. Starscream luckily gets away from the blast and goes straight for the Autobots base, but is followed by a tidal wave. As Starscream lands on Earth, the Autobots pick a signal up and it looks like Starscream's coming in for a secret attack, but little do they know that he's coming there for help. Hotshot and Wheeljack go straight in for Starscream, but they both realise that it's not him that is the enemy, it is in fact Tidal Wave. Then after a furious battle, they decide to bring in Starscream. Hotshot still finds it fishy that Starscream has appeared from nowhere and now wants to join the Autobots. And it's understandable because obviously they've had this furious war for thousands and thousands of years against the Decepticons. And now they want to join them? The Starscream goes, all right, cool. Let's go. The Minicons try in their power every way so Starscream doesn't leave, with the Autobots recognizing this for their love for the Minicons. Starscream even offers to give away all of his data so they can do an attack on the Decepticons. Starscream decides to go for a stroll with Hotshot falling behind him and attacking him for revenge over killing his friend Smokescreen. And out of nowhere, Smokescreen appears. So technically, what has Hotshot got to fight for? Hotshot decides to stop battling Starscream, but he still is suspicious for the reason he's here. So at this point, they've downloaded all the data from Starscreen's memory and decided to do a launch attack on the Decepticon base to recover all the minicons they've stolen. Megatron, we're under attack! It's time to finish you off, Demolisher. The Transformers do have a weird thing for finishing each other off, which is a bit, hmm. The original mission of them launching the attack on the Decepticons was to go after the minicons, but Starscream, blinded by so much hatred, only wants to do one thing and one thing only, go for Megatron, which disobeys his new leader's orders. Starscream is so intent on destroying Megatron that he's forgotten his mission. Starscream goes straight for Megatron, but before he could even swing at him, Megatron disappears. What kind of leader runs and leads his men to fight alone? You're a coward, Megatron! Shut up, Megatron. Starscream then goes looking for Megatron, with the Autobots finding Megatron in the middle of where all the minicons are. They decide to do this weird little song. Megatron then escapes again with Hotshot right behind him to do a secret attack, which doesn't go down too well. 
I'm basically at gunpoint. Sayonara, Autobot. Then out of nowhere, Starscream comes in and saves the day. You. How dare you! You don't scare me anymore, Megatron! I always knew you'd be a traitor! Hotshot and Starscream decide to team up, taking down Megatron. Now the mission is complete and they've got all the minicons, Optimus Prime orders for everyone to go back to their base. Starscream overhears Megatron getting up and he has to make this decision of does he stay here and take down Megatron or go back with the Ultabots. I just gave you a direct order, soldier. Will it be your heart or your programming? Autobot or Decepticon? <laughs> Starscream is conflicted with his situation. Fortunately enough, he chooses the Autobot side, but still doubts himself with it. There is no right decision! Take your time. Starscream decides to go outside and offer some energy. Well, I like to call it another temper tantrum. He was unable to bring down Megatron, and now he's angry. <laughs> The kids are watching over and they understand that Starscream joined the Autobots in the mission of destroying Megatron. But the Autobots mission is to go and to collect all the Minicons and not be in the hands of the Decepticons. Which makes him question, is this really the right choice? What am I doing here? I'm wasting my time following the orders of Optimus Prime and the others. I must get to Megatron soon. Even the kids at this route are trying to talk to Starscream, but it's not happening and just pushes them away. See out of context, it looks like Starscream's dick is hanging down. Later on, they discover a minicon that is from outer space. Moon? Is it at the Decepticon base where Megatron is? No. From what you can see, Starscream is a little bit obsessed with Megatron. Where is Megatron? Stand before Megatron. Megatron. You don't scare me anymore, Megatron. Down Megatron! I must have Megatron! Just to bring Megatron down! You're a coward, Megatron! Megatron soon. Base where Megatron is? No. Megatron down! <laughs> At this rate, you'll never defeat Megatron! Understand before Megatron? But if I refuse, Megatron will surely cut me down. Well, in fact, the Minicon is actually on Mars. So therefore, Starscream's a little bit disappointed, but decides to go on the mission anyway, and is assisted by Jetfire just in case he does anything stupid. The kids decide they want to join the mission too, but Jetfire quickly shuts them down so they ask for possibly a gift or a souvenir starscream decides to rush ahead and go straight for mars because obviously he wants megatron's head when they arrive on mars they get split up by a sandstorm and starscream looks up in the sky and sees a figure which he believes is megatron Unless I had you, megatron! who's that pokemon megatron And surprise, surprise, it's actually Tidal Wave because Megatron's a tank. It's not going to start flying in, is it? However, while Starscream is blabbering on about Megatron, Tidal Wave decides to just punch him in the back and just make him just fly to the ground. Well, I hope Starscream's not doing anything stupid either. The Minicons try to comfort Starscream as he's had a bit of a battle. I don't need your sympathy. Now leave me alone. So Starscream decides to just turn to leave and then gets sad that they've left. Decepticons for you. Even the Minicons have abandoned me now. At this point, Starscream is just in his feelings. He just comes out of this massive speech. I don't even know why I'm here anyway. All I ever wanted was a chance to defeat Megatron. Is that so much to ask for? They don't understand what it's like to be a Decepticon. I'm gonna make a stand right here on this planet. I will find Megatron wherever he may be, and I will crush him. When he crushes the rock, he sees something shiny inside and thinks back to when the kids say, can you bring us a souvenir from Mars? At this point, you see Starscream change from going from this hatred thing for Megatron, using the Autobots to his advantage, to realizing he has a soft spot for these humans and understands why the Autobots are protecting their planet. The Minicons end up finding Jetfire and bringing him to Starscream to get him up, because obviously he's just sitting there down in the dumps. Just save it. I want to be left alone. Yeah, still as stubborn as ever, I see. Your mission is to rescue the Minicons! So do it! My purpose here is to bring down Megatron! You can't possibly understand the humiliation that I've suffered! Jetfire decides that's enough and just handcuffs Starscream because he's sick and tired of him running away. Jetfire has now arrested Starscream and has taken him straight to the Autobot base for disobeying Optimus Prime on numerous occasions. As they go and pass an asteroid, they realize, wait a minute, there's a Minicon on there. So Starscream goes and tries to grab it and it appears. But but suddenly out of nowhere, Tidal Wave appears, shooting and firing at the Minicon and Starscream and Jetfire. At this point, you see Starscream change and understand the Autobots' mentality of saving all the Minicons. And he says this. We Autobots will protect you! The Decepticons will use you as a tool for war! Trust me! Fire! They 
head back to the Autobot base and decide to uncuff Starscream because obviously he did save the Minicon after all, which was technically the mission. I know you like the Minicons, which is why, in my opinion, you belong on the Autobot side. Spare me. My mission is to bring Megatron down. That's it. Starscream is filled with so much hatred for Megatron that even a compliment can't pierce through it. But as he walks away, Starscream's left them a gift, and it was the mineral that he found earlier on Mars, which I think is kind of sweet, and you can show his appreciation for the humans, and that he cares, because even Jetfire couldn't do that. So, did you bring back a souvenir? Uh, sorry guys, the souvenir shops on Mars were all closed. The Autobots find Starscream just standing there and not helping out building the base. So Jetfire decides to call him out. Starscream is just angered because he just feels like he's wasting time. At this rate, you'll never defeat Megatron. And that's what I'm here for. I joined the Autobots to bring Megatron down. The Minicons mean nothing to me. Enough chit chat, ladies. Hotshot decides to go to Optimus Prime and say to him that the Autobots and Starscream are just not getting along. Optimus Prime then explains to Hotshot the reason behind the differences and how we should work together. The Decepticons were programmed a lot different than us. With that in mind, Hotshot, don't you think that just might be the reason we're still battling them? See, it goes hard, but I'm thinking if you put a bit of Linkin Park in the background, then it's going to give you that pure Optimus Prime speech at the end of every single film. I think the first step we should take with Starscream is to try to understand our differences, and then we should attempt to come to some mutual agreement on how best to work together. As you can see, the leader that Optimus Prime is, he doesn't let anyone on his team be outcasted and wants everyone to work together. Anyway, back to Starscream. So it cuts to the shot where Starscream is entering his room. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> we made this for you. The kids made Starscream a polishing handkerchief, which I remember at the time things a little bit strange, but <laughs> you understand, man. But anyway, so they did it so he could polish himself, polish the mini cons, and it was just a thank you gift for getting them something from Mars, as they really wanted something. And as a Decepticon, he's never really got a thank you, so he reacts very strangely, but you can kind of tell he really appreciates it. It's just that I've never had anyone give me a present before. You can't be serious. What about on your birthday? You never got nothing? <sighs> Starscream is now experienced for the first time appreciation for something that he's done as a reward and he just doesn't know how to take it. Jetfire storms in and just tells him to get up and do some work. Even though Starscream is changing a little bit on how he is and how his mind works, the Decepticon that's deep rooted in him still doesn't agree with teamwork and prefers him to just go straight in for the neck. Oh, this teamwork talk is starting to make me go soft. Suddenly a weird incoming message appears and Starscream decides to go and check it out. Someone's watching. Surprise! It's the comedic genius himself, Thrush, I mean Thrust. If you haven't really recognized it already, <laughs> this is kind of stuff he comes out with. Any of you ladies going to do any work today, or are you just going to stand around chatting with one another? All right, bro, chill out. Anyway, back to the scene. I agree with you that Megatron has failed to prove himself as a leader. So join with me, and together we can bring Megatron down. No deal, Thrust! You are a fool if you believe you can destroy him with the help of those pathetic auto boobs! <sighs> you think Starscream liked that chamois we gave to him? The kids decide to end up going for a walk and they come across Starscream and Thrust. Well then, here's a simple question. Have you considered returning to your comrade? At this point, Thrust is trying to get Starscream to join him and destroy Megatron together. And the only way to do so is to bring the Sky Boom Shield, which the Autobots possess. And if he brings him this Sky Boom Shield, he'll be accepted back into the Decepticons, and internally, he can destroy Megatron. Which gets Starscream thinking, is this the right choice? Because Starscream wants to destroy Megatron, and teaming up with Thrust may be the only way. Even if he has to betray the Autobots. <laughs> Man, what was that all about, Fred? Huh, I don't have a clue. Well, we gotta tell all the others about this. The kids decide to run back to the Autobot base and tell them about what they've witnessed. Going back to Frost isn't just him who wants to double cross Megatron. It is also sideways because together they're gonna bring in the almighty Unicron. And that's the plan. But I find Starscream acting suspiciously and asks what's up with him, which he replies with, I've got work to do and walks off. Which would make anyone suspicious because Starscream has done nothing around the base. Starscream now has an inner conflict with himself because as much as he wants to destroy Megatron with the help of Thrust, Otto boobs! he can't help but think about the humans and how it made him feel. I know. Why am I doubting myself in the strange feeling I get from the humans? Yeah, rewind that back quickly. 
and the strange feeling I get from the human. Aside from that noncy comment, in Starscream's dilemma, in one hand he has the Autobots that treat him as if he was one of their own, and also has the humans who praise him and really do like Starscream as an individual compared to the Decepticons, who have always treated him unfairly. But this is the only way he can destroy Megatron is by going back. With the other issue is, if he leaves, he'll upset the humans, which he's built this great relationship with, and he doesn't want to do that. Guys! We just saw a cone-headed Decepticon! You mean Thrust? He was just outside our base! What are we waiting for? Come on, let's go get him! Now hang on a sec, Hotshot! Starscream chased the creep away already! Starscream is my hero! You are one twisted kid! So wrong with a kid having a hero, huh? Yeah, like Starscream's a hero. <laughs> Starscream, we were just talking about you. I hope it was all good. Blur congratulates Starscream for scaring off Thrust to keep him away from the Autobot base. But then Smokescreen comes in and says the Minicons are missing. Minicons are here? And these are the Minicons that Thrust spoke to him about to build the Skyboon shield. Even though Starscream was in the same room as them earlier, but... I don't know. This all goes well until the kids say this. Didn't that cone-headed guy ask you to bring the Sky Boom Shield with you to their moon base? Dun dun dun, he's busted. Don't tell me you're about to double cross us. Now the kids said that, Starscream is now under fire for handing over the Minicons to Frost. But as we saw earlier, they were there. The Autobots are now accusing Starscream of this crime. Hotshot comes in to try and save the day. Starscream, help me out and explain what's up here. And right now, you look pretty guilty. Guilty, huh? I don't think it matters what I say because you've already convicted me. But thanks for trying, Hotshot. That is not true! At this point, Starscream has come to realization that he is a Decepticon and nothing can change that. Please, let's face facts. I am much different than you. I was programmed as a Decepticon and I don't apologize for that. I've tried my best to understand the way you and the others think, but I must admit it was a failed experiment. No one said you did it. We just want to know the truth. But you can't handle it! The truth. Optimus Prime overhears the conversation and walks in. As he goes to interrogate Starscream, the siren alarms and the Decepticons have turned up to their base. You brought a parachute, Decepticon, because you're going down! The Autobots roll out and prepare for battle. Look! Jetfire's taking a pounding! This show's so zesty, man. The kids realize everyone's fighting each other, apart from one person. Transform! <laughs> Brust! Show yourself! Have you made your decision? I don't know why Frost has to sound so zesty, but anyway, Starscream goes after him and wants to tell him about his decision. But will Thrust convince him to switch sides? I have Thrust. I think I'll stay put here with bots I can trust. You disappoint me. And you'll live to regret your decision. Also, you can see Starscream is holding the handkerchief the kids made him. Starscream, I fully understand your desire for revenge against Megatron. You don't understand anything about me, Thrust. I'll get my revenge because I have the tools to get the job done. At this point, do we actually know what Starscream's going to do? Well, he says to Frost, you better get out of my way before I slice you in half. And Frost stops him in his tracks and says he wants to rule the Decepticons. And he can only do this with Starscream's help. And they must join as an alliance to take down Megatron. Which obviously gets Starscream thinking, is this the right choice? Should I join Thrust? Hotshot stumbles across the kids who are standing there with the Minicons to realize it wasn't Starscream who took them away. The kids were just going for a walk. Sorry, Hotshot. I guess we should have told someone what we were doing with them. Oh no, I almost forgot. We accused Starscream of stealing them. Huh? And that he just feels so guilty because obviously they all framed him for something he didn't do. You never stole the Minicon smoke screen. They were with the kids. I guess we all owe Starscream a giant Autobot apology. An Autobot apology. Uh, that's great. <laughs> It seems your friends have found what they were looking for. Starscream tries to slice Frost but just can't do it because for some reason he's held back by the humans and in his turn he's become soft which infuriates him which causes him to do one thing and one thing only. <laughs> Smoke screen decides to throw the Skyboom shield to Optimus as he's in a lot of danger, but it doesn't reach him. It reaches someone else. I don't believe it. It worked. It actually worked. Good work, Smoke screen. What? Optimus, Optimus sir. <gasps> <gasps> Starscream! Starscream takes the Skyboom shield and agrees with Thrust that this is the only way to take down Megatron. But he thinks to himself, is this still the right choice? 
I don't know if this is the right choice. I have made my decision. What is it? I must do everything there is in my power to bring Megatron down. Goodbye, kids. And thanks. I'll never forget you. You see the handkerchief swaying in the wind, and Starscream's left this behind because if he brings this with himself, he cannot do his mission, the original mission, of taking down Megatron. Because when he had this in his hand, he couldn't even attack Thrust, let alone Megatron if he wants to do that. Starscream! Why Starscream? Why? In the next chapter of our story, Betrayal. I trusted him! How could he do this to me? He's lost it. At this point, the Autobots are betrayed, upset, and furiated by what Starscream has done. The Autobots now think the reason why Starscream joins the fact that he only wants the minicons all along, and he was just playing the long game. And they just feel so used and upset. The kids are also upset as they thought they made a friend, but found out. Starscream isn't who he is. And he's a Septicon after all, so they should have kind of saw it coming. Hotshot and Jetfire cleared him with so much anger that they want to go after him and destroy him. And Optimus Prime says this. Don't give up on Starscream just yet. There's no doubt he's a hardened Decepticon, but he's still a Transformer. He still could come around. And I'm hoping that all Transformers will make peace with each other someday. So now Starscream delivered to Megatron the final pieces he needs for his special cannon. And to be honest with you, it's a bit of an Oppenheimer moment of like, oh, I've made this bomb. I didn't realize it's going to kill people. Thrust then disappears and Starscream goes after him and questions him. Why is he making this cannon? And the reason behind it is he could use his cannon to destroy Megatron. And that's why you manipulated me to get them. I had to do it for you. Do it for me? Yes. You see, if you defeat Megatron, then I know you will take command of the Decepticon. I've always been your ally, Starscream. I just had to hide it from the others so they wouldn't get suspicious. It doesn't make sense for me to carry on now, so might as well finish me off. In conclusion, I believe that Thrust is actually a different type of Transformer. He is not a Decepticon, he is not an Autobot, and he is a little bit too big to be a Minicon. So, I believe in his own league that he would be a Zesticon, because for the zestiness that comes out of his mouth. Finish me off! Starscream walks away and leaves him to it, with Sideways watching the whole time. Impressive performance, Thrust! You heard all that? You're quite an actor. Soon after, the Hydra Cannon was built, and could be used to destroy comets and even worlds. <laughs> We need full power on the rear engine, or we're going to be blown back by the recoil! Okay! Okay, why is everything that Frost says is just so zesty? Like morons attempting to attack me, Squidhead? I wish he wouldn't call me that anymore. How would he like to be called Flathead? <laughs> so why don't you share your little joke with everyone? <laughs> I wasn't uh, laughing, sir. <laughs> Flathead? Boy, I can really dish it out. <laughs> you are a freak. They decide to test the cannon and destroy a comet that's passing by the Earth, which works very well. So the next mission for Megatron is to use this on the Autobot base. First, there's some unfinished business. Starscream, I want you to target the Autobot base. As the Earth rotates, it's now on the other side of the planet. To this point, Megatron's like, if we need the Autobot base, we might just have to go straight through the Earth, which troubles Starscream. The Autobots base? But if we do that, the Earth will be blown to bits as well! So what? Megatron then says to Starscream, he is solely counting on him to press that button that will destroy Earth. The thing is, as much as he wants to destroy Megatron, he cannot disobey him as he's still a Decepticon. I know Megatron wants to get the Autobots. Why does he have to destroy the whole planet? I can't let this happen. There are too many innocent people down there. My friends are down there. <sighs> Somebody! Help me! What's the problem? My nose is itchy and I can't scratch it! But if I refuse, Megatron will surely cut me down. I don't have much time. What should I do? Starscream is now in another dilemma. Does he disobey Megatron and save the planet? Or does he do as Megatron says and destroy the planet and most importantly, his new friends? Now, what am I gonna do? What if I'm the one chosen to destroy planet Earth? You have betrayed my trust on more than one occasion, Starscream. Starscream, prepare to fire the Hydra Cannon! <laughs> Sayonara, Optimus Prime! It looks like I win! Before Starscream attempts to press the button, Optimus Prime comes along and tries to destroy the ship. Get rid of Optimus Prime before I get rid of you! Ugh, prove your loyalty! Yes, sir! Starscream then attempts to fight Jetfire, which, you know what happens, man. And don't tell your back on me! I'm your enemy! 
<laughs> Megatron sees the opportunity and wants to go straight for Optimus Prime's neck. And Thrust, will I finish off Optimus? As Megatron is finishing off Optimus Prime, Thrust decides to press the button to fire the Hydra Cannon. Optimus Prime sees the Hydra Cannon about to blast straight into the Earth's core, so he goes over to it and uses his inside Matrix to blow it back. But unfortunately, this leads to the death of Optimus Prime. Huh? The Earth! It's still there! Even though Starscream is relieved that the Earth is safe, this has unfortunately cost the life of Optimus Prime. And now he's in guilt, because obviously, he's the one who brought these three together and made the Hydra Cannon. So now the blood is on his hands. And he feels guilty for what he's done. Because in retrospect, Starscream would have done the same to save the humans. Megatron then sets the coordinates to go back to Cybertron, as now Optimus Prime's not there, he can take back Cybertron. Did I say I was worried, Squidhead? The Autobots without Optimus Prime are no more of a threat to me than a common house fly. My sincerest apologies, sir. While they're traveling back to Cybertron with Hotshot now in command as Optimus Prime's up there, they decide to do a full pledge attack on the Decepticon ship with Hotshot wanting one thing and one thing only to destroy Starscream. Ah! Hey, you traitor! It's nice to see you again! Great <laughs> Which doesn't go too well. Ah! And in fact, they get nearly defeated until the Minicons regroup and rebuild and bring back Optimus Prime. Optimus! But is this really the end of Optimus Prime? Find out in tomorrow's exciting episode, The Return of Optimus Prime. After the battle, a strange black hole appears and some of the Autobots get sucked into it. But also, they retrieve a mysterious Autobot message, which the Decepticons go straight for. Well, I don't see any Autobots around here. Somehow I feel we'll be crossing their path soon enough, man. Then out of nowhere, a strange looking Optimus Prime appears and calls himself Nemesis Prime and wants to destroy anything in his sight. <laughs> this I'm ready Nemesis Prime will destroy Grinch No don't <gasps> Fry! Megatron just straight up blasts Nemesis Prime, but Starscream is worried because Red Alert and Hotshot are also behind him. <laughs> I know it's not much of a challenge, but I'll blast them anyway. Wait, Megatron! Huh? Why don't we take them both hostage? Hostage? We can use them as bait to lure the other Autobots to the planet! You know what you are, Starscream? You're a no good lowdown. Deserter! I'm a Decepticon! As much as Starscream is a Decepticon, he still doesn't want to destroy the Autobots. He'd rather just do what Megatron says, and then when he gets to the final point, he can destroy him. And that is the plan. Because at the end of the day, he only wants to destroy Megatron. What's the point of taking out the others? It's just a waste of time. And then suddenly, Nemesis Prime morphs back together again and goes straight for all the Decepticons' heads. But as they go for the Autobots, the Minicons appear and protect them, destroying Nemesis Prime, and also giving the Autobots and the Decepticons a more advanced armor to protect them as they've been through so much damage. Which which also turns them into different colours. So now Starscream kind of looks like Thundercracker. Optimus Prime comes down because Nemesis Prime is now back to life again, but absolutely huge. So him and Megatron, now Galvatron, decide to team up to destroy Nemesis Prime, which turns out to be sideways the whole time. They both retreat back to their ships. Set a course for our final destination immediately. Now we will conquer Cybertron. Yes, Galvatron! The Decepticons then land on Cybertron, which is still overrun by Autobots. So they go straight in for a full pledge attack and destroy the ships. The Decepticon ships are ready for action. And Galvatron, armed with the Skyboom Shield, the Star Saber, and the Requiem Blaster, knows that the victor will control the universe. Starscream is annoyed by the fact that these three weapons are created by the Minicons. 
and are going to make them win the war, which annoys him because he wants the Decepticons to do it purely by themselves and are stealing the show. I can't believe this has come to this! What are you talking about? The Minicons becoming heroes! Elvatron will end up getting all the glory! Let him lead the way into Battlestar's grief! Thrust is hoping that Galvatron will be destroyed by the Autobots, causing them to take control of the Decepticons. And Thrust mysteriously looks up into the sky, seeing a strange moon. Optimus Prime tells the Autobots that there's an either bigger enemy than Galvatron taking over Cybertron and the fact is that Unicron is coming and the Minicons have warned him about him. Now back to Cybertron where he's been absolutely obliterated by the Decepticons. Perfect vantage point to watch the carnage below. Even the sound of your voice makes me sick thrust. Uh, be that as it may, Starscream, but remember, you and I are allies to the end. Optimus Prime goes after Galvatron to speak to him because he needs to know that they have to join forces otherwise they cannot destroy the almighty unicron i speak only the truth see for yourself <laughs> is finally coming together. Starscream now realizes that Thrust's plan all along was just to join his alliance and bring back Unicron. The Decepticons and Autobots head back to their ships with Galvatron saying to himself that this was just a stunt for Optimus Prime to join as one and that Unicron is not a threat to him because he's got the three almighty weapons. Autobots are only trying to confuse us with all this talk about Unicron, <laughs> if he exists. <laughs> I love the part earlier where Sideways says Thrust is such a good actor. He's not, he's shit. Like, even I would be like, my man's about to double cross me. While this conversation is going on, Hotshot goes straight to Galvatron and says to him in front of all the Decepticons that they need their help to take down the almighty Unicron. Like, you have to admit, Hotshot's got some pretty big robots balls to go straight to Galvatron. There's another enemy that we both must be concerned about. The Minicons have shown us that we all share a common foe. The one called Unicron. Oh, not more of that Unicron nonsense. Go! I'm growing tired of listening to your drivel. <laughs> it all sinks in for Starscream because it was Thrust who wanted him to turn on Galvatron. Did you tell me to leave the Decepticons? And I've always wanted to know why you encouraged me to turn against Galvatron too. Was it another one of your schemes to put yourself in a more favorable position with our leader? Leader? I love Starscream's voice. Starscream? Whatever are you talking about? You. You've been plotting against me all along. Admit it. They all now realize that Frost double-crossed them the whole time. The plan all along was to take these three almighty weapons and bring them straight to Unicron. Before Galvatron can get his hands on Frost, he disappears with the two weapons. Now that Frost is public enemy number one, all the Transformers are after him, scouting out for him. And Starscream finds Thrust, crying out for help for Sideways. So Thrust, what exactly are your intentions? Incredible power! Incredible power. Yes, Unicron and I will rule together. You and Unicron. It's not too late for you to join us, Starscream. Save your breath, you mindless machine. I'd rather fight and die than follow the likes of you and Unicron. Have it your way. Starscream! Huh? While this conversation is going on, the kids are trying to find Hotshot. They instead stumble across Thrust and Starscream. What have we here? Ah, it's Thrust! Don't back down! You've come all the way here. How noble of you, little children. Let me show you my appreciation. Huh? I hope you enjoy it, kids! <laughs> Thrust was going to blast the kids, and in the blink of the moment, Starscream gets in the way. <gasps> And that's it. That's that's the end of Starscream. That's the end of his story. Psych. Some weird thing happens where they go back to the future and come back again. And somehow it goes back to the scene where Starstream gets shot. <laughs> After Starscream diverts the blast, Thrust then runs away. But as this is happening, the ceiling's crumbling down, falling on the children. So Starscream shields himself over the kids. He realises now that Frost has run away, so he runs off after him, after he knows the kids are safe. The common theme throughout this series with Starscream is the fact that he may have some issues with the Decepticons, disagreements with the Autobots. With the humans, he always makes sure they're safe. Sometimes you just gotta go. I gotta go! As obviously they're the only people who have ever given him respect. And that's why I love Starscream 
man. Hotshot and Wheeljack come across the kids, asking why are they there? To be honest, they just said they were bored, and a certain Transformer saved them. Just so lucky! Starscream found us and brought us down to the planet. Starscream found you? Yeah, that's right. And he's a really good friend of ours. I don't know if I'd call him a friend yet. What do you mean by that, Carlos? <laughs> Frost! Get back here! <laughs> After chasing up with Frost, a mysterious portal appears, and Starscream, a little bit hesitant, puts his sword through the portal to see what would happen. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to go through there. Starscream then enters the portal. As Starscream comes out of the portal, he comes across a very weird place. What is this place? With Sideways and Frost standing there. Hello, Sideways. Been a long time, Starscream. So you're the mastermind behind all of this, huh? Listen, I'm gonna make you an offer. Join our side now and be a part of Unicron's glorious plan. I'd do it if I were you. Thanks, but no thanks. Really? But I thought you wanted to defeat Galvatron. Hasn't he humiliated you long enough? Together, we could finish him. Maybe. <laughs> but you're the one I want to finish off! Like I've said throughout this whole video, they have a thing for finishing each other off. Sideways annoyed by Starscream declining his offer, he decides to use these spider things and attack him. Hotshot and the humans were not too far behind and jump through the portal too. They find Frost, Sideways, and also Starscream in a bit of a state. <laughs> Hotshot and Wheeljack attempt to go after Sideways, but ends up failing and being in the same position as Starscream. The kids try to distract them. No way, that can't be! Come on, uh, get down, Carlos! You wanna get nailed? But ends up failing, with Sideways saying it's just not worth their time going after them. Let's reverse that and see what he said again. You wanna get nailed? Once again, it's a very zesty ass show, and to be honest, I'm not surprised if Frost didn't write this. Hotshot and Wheeljack decide to link up, destroying the parasites around them. With Starscream still under attack, he tells them to forget about him, just go straight for Sideways sideways and thrust. Now let's move out! As they run away, Starscream uses this move where the blast has come out of his nipples, but it seems to work though. Ah! As Starscream looks to his side, he sees one person has actually waited for him. Why are you still waiting around for me? Because you're my friend. I'm your friend? Yeah, that's right. You're my friend. That means we have to help each other. Help each other? Mm-hmm. We better get moving. Come on, let's go! You can see here from Starscream's impact, the way he's treated the kids and looks after them, that he's come back in return, that one of them is even waiting for him, even though he told the others to go after Sideways. Starscream and Alexis then enter the cave with weird wires going after them, purple sludge, trying to disrupt them, get into Unicron. Well, I'm a boy! Come on, Rhinor! <laughs> okay, both of you hang on tight! I'm here with Starscream. We had a couple of close calls, but we're okay. What I love the most about this next scene and the scene you've just been watching is the relationship between Starscream and Alexis, how it's formed. It's beautiful. <laughs> While Starscream's flying away, the tentacles go after them and snatch off her necklace. Please, Starscream, we have to stop so I can get it. It's not safe. But without that necklace, we won't be safe down here. Come back! She decides to just straight off just jump for it. But it's funny because this is literally what Starscream's like and he's getting frustrated with it. She goes down and gets the necklace with Grindor right behind her. But the tentacles grab Grindor and pick him up. Starscream comes in, destroys the tentacles. <laughs> and brings them back up to fly them away to safety. Thanks a lot, Grindor. I guess that necklace means a lot to you. Yeah, it's very special to me. I do think throughout the whole series, this is my favourite frame. I've even attempted to try and do it as a normal star screen, but yeah. As they come out of the cave, they realise that Cybertron's moon is crumbling. And guess what was buried there all along? Unicron. The moon was Unicron all along! Well done, Starscream. Starscream decides this is the end of the line here as he saved the kids and he starts walking away. Don't go! Stay here with us! How about joining with us? I'll have to pass. I don't want to risk betraying you a second time. It wouldn't be fair. I know you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't betray your friends, would you? <sighs> you can really tell that that one hit deep with Starscream, but he's unsure because obviously he betrayed them before and he doesn't want to do it again. And he just doesn't want to hurt Alexis and destroy the trust and bond that they've made with each other. I'm not sure. I'm not sure of anything. 
anymore. That is a phrase that Starscream does use a lot in the series. And you got to put it into perspective that this Transformer is over thousands of years old. So for one person to come along, call him a friend and trust him, of course this would make Starscream feel uneasy. You trusted me, Alexis, and I thank you for that. As I watched Starscream walk away, I realized there was still so much I didn't understand about the Transformers. The scars of their age-old battle runs deep, far deeper than I ever realized. With the last chapter in this story, Sacrifice, Starscream then heads back to the Decepticon base, telling Galvatron of what he has seen. Why do we have to fight? For just this once, can't you put aside your petty argument with Optimus? That's enough! Galvatron then shuts down Starscream about joining forces, as he had enough hearing about Unicron. And Jeremy Starscream stressed it because he's seen what Unicron is capable of, and Galvatron is too stubborn to admit it. As obviously as the Decepticon leader is, he thinks he's the most powerful, but you got something coming. And the day will soon come when Unicron is defeated. It will be too late! You simpleton, Optimus and I are sworn enemies! But Galvatron, sir, I don't think Optimus would make this offer unless he truly believed it! As you can see, didn't go down too well, and even the other Decepticons laugh at him. Starscream then tells Galvatron that they need to put the difference aside, because otherwise, they're gonna have nothing to fight for, because neither of them are gonna be alive. Go ahead and laugh, but soon that pea brain of yours will be sorry! Oh, I think Optimus is the one that will be sorry as soon as I defeat him. And that goes for Unicron as well. That's insanity! The only way we can survive is if our two armies join forces, Galvatron! Enough! You can't do this, sir! Galvatron does thank Starscream for seeing through the lies of Thrust, but does say to him if he crosses him or doesn't follow through with his plan to destroy Optimus Prime and Unicron, he will destroy him too. What's the matter, Starscream? Are you just going to sit there and mope, or are you going to join us and kick some Autobot? I wanted to put this scene in here because I thought it looked beautiful, and we're just going to zoom out for a little bit. You've got the Galvatron statue of his hand up with Unicron in the middle, and you've got Starscream overwatching it. It's just, it's insane. I wish I knew what to do. I believe in you, Starscream. I must protect the humans. One thing that Starscream took away from the Autobots is their protection and desire to look after the humans. And even Starscream carries this with them. We cut to Optimus Prime trying to speak to Galvatron about joining forces. It's time to shut you down. <laughs> so, you want to negotiate, do you? Okay, I'm gay. Galvatron attempts to strike down Optimus Prime, with Optimus Prime catching the blade. Uh, Starscream didn't fall for anything, he just saw the truth! Don't feed me your lies! Optimus Prime getting absolutely obliterated right now by Galvatron and he's still speaking facts. This man is next level of a leader. As Galvatron's about to kill Optimus Prime, an explosion appears. And walking through the explosion is the man, the myth, the legend, what the whole video is about. Starscream! The game's over, Galvatron! Starscream is finally putting his foot down and saying to Galvatron that they must team up with the Autobots as it's the only way they could beat Unicron. And the only way for Starscream to prove his loyalty and his argument is to go against Galvatron himself. Optimus Prime says it's a personal thing between him and Galvatron and that to Starscream to stay out of this. And he says he doesn't care who he is but he's doing this regardless of Optimus Prime's orders. Which takes Optimus back because obviously no one says no to him as he's the leader. No one defies my command and gets away with it. Sorry, I don't want work for you anymore. I've made up my mind to bring this to an end. But all is said and done. Unicron will be destroyed and the universe will be at peace. May I suggest that you have lost your mind? I'll destroy you. Come and get a taste of my blade. Once again, Starscream looks like he's holding his dick. Galvatron says Starscream, if he doesn't change his mind then and then, he's going to destroy him. My only chance is to see you unite with Optimus. Galvatron decides this is enough and goes straight for Starscream, with both dealing a lot of damage to each other. I've often wondered what it would be like to battle against you, Galvatron, but your words are stronger than your fighting abilities. I'm very disappointed. Starscream absolutely changed shit to Galvatron to rile him up. Galvatron flips Starscream's blade up into the air. Oh no! Yeah. 
And while this battle is taking place, the almighty Unicron is building up its power. An A for effort, but unfortunately your misguided aspirations are about to end in failure, Starscream. My favorite part about Galvatron is the fact that it will just go absolutely into any Transformer who annoys him. And we'll just ramble on. Like, you could take any opportunity just to go at him, but they just stand there and listen. This battle's far from over, Galvatron. All right, I forgot who you are. A mere Decepticon soldier whose programming has gone haywire. Galvatron does praise Starscream for his bravery and even gives Starscream an opportunity to stop and redeem himself. And maybe if I'm still in a good mood, I might spare your miserable life. This is my final offer, Starscream. It's just the fact that Starscream doesn't talk for one second and he's like, oh, well, guess you're against me. All right, then. I believe you've made your final decision, haven't you? Well, now it's time to pay the consequences, soldier. Personally, I think Starscream is the best soldier. As Galvatron is fighting back against Starscream's blade, he tells him, have you made up your mind yet, or are you going to carry on? You can tell Galvatron himself is pretending as if this isn't a hard fight, but my man's losing. <laughs> time up! <laughs> As they both strike each other down, they both land, but one gets penetrated and one's only slightly hurt. Starting to annoy me, Starscream. It's the least I can do. Starscream, where in the universe did you get all this power? Right now that doesn't matter, does it, Galvatron? Unfortunately, Starscream has had the blade gone straight through his heart. Galvatron is very confused why he's let him do this to himself. Tell me. Why did you let me run you through like that, soldier? I'm not crying. I'm not crying. You had this planned all along, didn't you? I did, sir. But all of this could have been prevented if you only had given me some respect. As much as Starscream is saying this to Galvatron, throughout the whole series, he's been the underdog. And all Starscream wanted was a bit of respect, which the humans did give him. And in his dying moment, all he wants is Galvatron just to give him a bit of respect. Save your breath, Starscream. Which he doesn't. I tried to gain favor from you, but nothing was ever good enough. No matter how many battles I fought, you always found fault. Then I saw how Optimus treated his men, and I realized he was a leader of integrity. Because it's true, Optimus was the only Autobot to give his full respect to Starscream throughout his time on the team. Even when Optimus was betrayed, he still spoke highly of him. Unlike Galvatron, Optimus Prime treats every Transformer equally. Unlike you. You were too weak to ever gain my respect. None of that matters now. You must listen. Do as Optimus says and join forces with the Autobots or else every last one of us is doomed. Please, sir. Do it for me. Starscream looks to the sky to see Unicron becoming more powerful by the second, producing energy so strong it could probably destroy Cybertron, but most importantly, his friends. So in the moment, Starscream makes the ultimate sacrifice to merge his own spark with the spark of Unicron, preventing Unicron's total destruction. Because obviously, this not only saves him, but it saves the universe and redeems Starscream in the eyes of his former enemies and his allies. To attract attention, he fires straight for Unicron. <laughs> You're all mine, Unicron! As the kids run to the window, they see Unicron and a blast going towards him. But suddenly it fades, and she knows to herself that blast could only come from Starscream. <laughs> It's over, Swindle, but he fought like a brave soldier until the end. Galvatron looks at the blade and reminisces over everything Starscream has said to him. I tried to gain favor from you, but nothing was ever good enough. No matter how many battles I fought, you always found fault. Then I saw how Optimus treated his men, and I realized he was a leader of integrity. Unlike you. Galvatron takes the blade, turning it upside down. Optimus Prime to come over and take the other end of the handle. Show they will reunite as one to destroy Unicron. Why did Starscream do that to himself? I wish I had the answers, Alexis. 
And yeah, that's the end of Starscream's story. Does Starscream come back? Does he survive? No, no, he doesn't. He does appear back in Energon for some strange reason, like nothing happened. And it kind of destroys the story of him, but we won't get into that. In conclusion, I'd like to say the writers of Transformers Armada did very well with the story of Starscream. And should you watch it? Yeah, 100%. Have I kind of just summed it all up in 50 minutes? Yes, I have. I just love this show, man. The nostalgia and everything behind it. Yeah, it's it's perfect. But hey, it's been your boy, Sharp Baby. Thank you so much for watching this emotional roller coaster of a video. And if you could like, subscribe, and also comment, because it's taken me a few months and I would like some appreciation, man. Yeah, star scream, 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 star scream.